Welcome back. In the previous session, we had learned how to draw immediate inference based on the traditional square of opposition. In this session, we shall present three other types of methods with the help of which we can draw immediate inferences. And these three methods are conversion, obversion, and contraposition. So what is conversion? It is a valid form of immediate inference. It is applied only on E and I propositions. What do we do here? We simply interchange the subject term and the predicate terms. For example, in the E proposition, no circles are square. The subject is circles and the predicate is square. After conversion is applied to this E proposition, it will become no squares are circles. The original proposition is referred to as the convertent and the conversed proposition is called the converse. Now look at this convertent, the I proposition. Some women are writers. Before the copula, we get the subject term, which is woman. And after the copula, we get the predicate term, which is writers. Now, in the converse, they will be interchanged. So, some writers are women. Another example, no men are angels. The subject is men and the predicate is angels. In the converse, we can write no angels are men. So what are the rules of conversion? Subject and predicate are interchanged. This I'm sure you have understood. Some other important points are, in the conversion, the quality does not change, which means that if the proposition is uh, affirmative, then it will remain affirmative even after conversion. Also, if it is a negative proposition uh, in the convertent, after conversion, it will stay negative. So you can see both the examples that we considered over here, the I proposition and its converse, they are both positive, and the E proposition, the convertent and the converse, they are both negative. Conversion is only valid in E and I proposition. Conversion by limitation happens only in A proposition, and conversion of O is not valid at all. Now, let's see why conversion of A proposition is not valid. Consider this proposition. All dogs are animals. If we converse it and interchange the subject and the uh, predicate, it will become all animals are dogs. This obviously is a wrong statement because uh, all animals can't be dogs. There are many million other sort of animals. So what we are going to do over here, we are going to keep the quality same, that is keep it affirmative, but change the quantity only in a proposition. So instead of writing, all animals are dogs, we are going to write some animals are dogs, which is a I proposition. And this is described as conversion by limitation, and it is applied only to A proposition. And let's see what happens when we try to apply conversion to O proposition. For example, some animals are not dogs. If we interchange the subject and the predicate, the proposition will become some dogs are not animals, which is obviously not correct. That is why O proposition cannot be converted at all. Here is a list uh, of the convertent and the converse of all the four propositions. A is conver after conversion. By limitation, it becomes all S is P becomes some P is S. E proposition becomes 
no S is P becomes no P is S. In I proposition, some S is P becomes some P is S. And in O proposition, some S is not P conversion is not valid at all. Now the next type of immediate inference is obversion. Before understanding obversion, we are going to understand the notion of a class. Now what is a class? A class is a collection of all objects having a certain common attribute that we refer to as a class defining characteristic. And the complementary class or simply complement is a collection of all things that do not belong to the original class. So if people is a class, then its complementary class will be non-people. If white is a class, then the complementary class will be non-white. If class is S, then the complementary class will be non-S. If the class is P, then the complementary class will be non-P. So what are the rules of obversion? Number one, no interchange of subject and predicate. Secondly, no change in quantity. A universal proposition will remain universal after obversion and a particular proposition will remain particular after obversion. Number three, the quality changes, which did not happen in conversion. Here, the quality does change. So A becomes E, that is affirmative becomes negative or vice versa. Similarly, I can become O, O can become I. That, that is, the quality can change from affirmative to negative or from negative to affirmative. And finally, let's come, in, come into the class concept. In obversion, the predicate is replaced by its complement. If instead of saying all S is P, we have to say no S is non-P. So what is non-P? Non-P is the complement of P. And finally, obversion is valid in all the four propositions, A, E, I, and O. Now let us do this obversion. No umpires are partisans. It is an E proposition. The obverse we have got over here is all umpires are non-partisans. So how did we come from the E proposition to this A proposition? First of all, we have to remember that there is no interchange of subject and predicate. Secondly, the predicate term partisans is replaced by its complement, which is non-partisans. Third step is change the quality, but not the quantity. So what is the quality over here? It is a negative quality. And what is the quantity? It is universal. So universal negative to universal affirmative. In this way, no becomes all. Both A and E are universal quantities, but qualitatively different. In this way, we get the obverse, which is all umpires are non-partisans. So this is a valid obversion table. All S is P. If this A proposition is the obvertent, then the obverse will be no S is non-P. So the universal remains universal, but the quality changes from all to no, and P is replaced by non-P. Again, the E proposition, no S is P. No becomes all because the quality changes from negative to affirmative, but it remains universal. P is replaced by its complement, which is non-P. So no S is P after obversion will become the A proposition, all S is non-P. The I proposition, some S is P. So what is the qualitatively uh, uh, other of the I proposition, 
it is the O proposition because the I proposition is affirmative and the O proposition is uh, negative. And both of these, I and O, are particular. So we are not supposed to change the quantity, so particular remains the particular. Only the quality changes, which means I will change to O. Some will change to some not. So some S is P will change to some S is not. And P is replaced by its complement, which is non-P. Do not forget to include both not and non-P. They are not same. Okay. Don't think that because you're writing some S is non-P, you do not have to write not. It is not so. You must write some not. Both of these words in the O proposition. Otherwise, it is going to be wrong. The O proposition, some S is not P, after a version will become the I proposition, which is some S is non P. O proposition was negative, particular negative. After a version, it becomes particular affirmative. And P is replaced by its complement, which is non P. Now, what is contraposition? Contraposition is a mixture of conversion and obversion. So here, first we will obvert, then we will convert, and finally we will obvert again. So the first step is obversion. All members are voters. This is a premise, an A proposition. So if we apply obversion to it, what will happen? All will become no. Subject and predicate will not be exchanged. And the predicate voter will be replaced by its complement. So the obverse will be no members are non-voters. In the second step, we are going to apply conversion, which means the subject and the predicate will interchange their places. So no members are non-voters will become, no non-voters are members. In the third step, we are going to apply obversion again. So all non-voters are non-members because the converse was no non-voters are members. So the predicate was members and the complement of this predicate will be non-members and no will become all. So all non-voters are non-members. This will be the final uh, 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 contrapositive. Okay, so after applying contraposition to the premise, all members are voters, we get the contrapositive, which is all non-voters are non-members and they are going to have the same truth value. Now, contraposition is valid only in A and O proposition. Let us consider an O proposition. Some athletes are not women. This is an O proposition, so it is particular negative. First, we have to uh, uh, apply obversion. After obversion, the uh, proposition will become an I proposition. Some athletes are non-women. To this, we apply conversion and it becomes some non-women are athletes. To this, we again apply obversion. So the final contrapositive becomes some non-women are not non-athletes. Now, contraposition is invalid in I proposition. Take this I proposition. Some S is P. After obversion, which is the first step for doing contraposition, the I proposition becomes an O proposition, which is some S is not non-P. Now, if you remember, we have already seen 
that O proposition cannot be conversed. Conversion does not apply to O proposition. So you cannot complete the, uh, the process of contraposition. Hence, it is said that the I position, uh, proposition cannot be contraposited. And contraposition by limitation is applied to E proposition. Contraposition of, uh, like we did in conversion of A, in conversion of A, A has become I. Similarly, here the contrapositive of E is not E proposition, but O proposition. When you're applying contrapositive by limitation, then the E proposition, no S is P, will become some non-P is not non s contraposition by limitation here is a list of valid contra uh, contrapositions premise a all s is p will become all non p is non s premise e no s is p here just now we did contraposition by limitation is going to be applied so e will become o some non p is not non s i here contraposition is not valid we have seen that the uh, conversion of o proposition which was a step to complete the process of contraposition cannot be applied so i propositions cannot be contraposited and the o proposition some s is not p after contraposition will become some non p is not non s Let's lead, uh, read the summary once again. Conversion which consists of switching the order of the subject and the predicate term is valid only in E and I proposition. Number two, obversion which consists of forming the complement of the predicate and changing the quality of the statement and is valid for all four types of categorical proposition. And thirdly, contraposition, which consists in forming the complements of both the terms, that is subject as well as predicate, and then switching their order, and it is valid only in A and O proposition. Now let's revise what we have learned. This is a convertent. No reply, uh, reptiles are warm-blooded animals. In conversion, we have to interchange the subject and the predicate so the uh, convertent will become no warm-blooded animals are reptiles the second one is an obvertent some clergy are not abstainers it is an o proposition the particular negative will become particular positive that is an i proposition and the Predicate term abstainers will be replaced by its complement. So the proposition uh, some clergy are not abstainers will become some clergy are non abstainers. Some soldiers are not officers. This is the premise. We have to apply contraposition to it. And after applying contraposition, it will become some non officers are not non-soldiers. Now, this is the sort of questions you will get. If some saints were martyrs, it's true. What may be inferred about the truth or falsehood of the following proposition? And what is the following proposition? Some saints were not non-martyrs. Our task is to use conversion, obversion, or contraposition to represent the problem statement in the standard form given. So what is the uh, standard form? In the standard form, the subject is saint and the predicate is martyrs. But in the problem statement, the predicate has become non-martyrs. So we are going to first try to change non-martyrs to martyrs so that in both the given proposition and in the problem proposition, the subject and the predicate 
remain the same. To make the predicate non-martyrs, what we can do? We can apply obversion because uh, the complementary of non-martyrs will be martyrs. If you are thinking that you can write non-non-martyrs, then double negation will make it a positive. That is, non-non-martyrs will become martyrs. Also, due to aversion, the quality will change from negative to positive. The quality in the problem statement, statement was a negative one. Some things were not non-martyrs. That is, it was an opposition. After aversion, it will become an I proposition. So it will become some saints were martyrs. Thus we have used aversion to extract the same I proposition which was given. Uh, and this, in this way, so uh, if the given proposition is true, obviously what we have derived, it is the same proposition. So it is also going to be true. So that's all for now. I hope you have understood how to do conversion, obversion, and contraposition. Uh, still, for your practice and reference, I've uploaded some answers, most of the answers actually, from Introduction to Logic, Potent Edition. Uh, and you can download all the answers from the link which is given in the description. In our next session, we are going to learn about existential import and how the square of opposition has been interpreted differently uh, by Aristotle and George Boole, that is uh, the classical logic versus the modern logic. Okay, so don't miss the next session. Goodbye and take care till then. Bye-bye.